This is CBS 46 News at 6, getting results. Once shuttered businesses slowly reopening, barber shops, nail salons, spas, bowling alleys, and tattoo parlors are some of the non-essential businesses now open after Governor Kemp gives them the green light. Team coverage tonight on these unprecedented times. CBS 46 speaking with business owners, employees, and potential customers. And we begin our coverage with Adam Murphy. Adam. Good evening, Rick. It's pretty quiet out here right now off West Paces Ferry Road outside the governor's mansion. But earlier today, it got a bit loud as protesters tried to get the attention of Governor Kemp. Just outside the OK Cafe in Atlanta, a group of protesters gathered to let the governor know things are not OK. I don't feel like he's listening to, to me and people like me. Blake Nichols posted these signs on her car showing opposition to Governor Brian Kemp's decision to reopen the state in the midst of a pandemic. Killing everyone's meemaw prematurely, Kemp, and then this one is Kemp. Uh, knows everyone might perish. Dozens of other Georgians did the same, and while the signs were different, the messages were the same. They say that it's supposed to be two weeks of um, decline, and we haven't seen that. He's not even following White House guidelines. Even Trump says this is too soon. If he's saying that, then, you know, that says a lot. And um, it just doesn't make any sense, you know. You can't do tattoos, you can't do hair salons, you can't do those things and keep people six feet apart. To get their point across, the group formed a caravan and drove past the governor's mansion on West Paces Ferry Road. Meanwhile, outside the state capitol in downtown Atlanta, the concerned black clergy lashed out at the governor as well. Stay home, stay home, and stay safe. And while these protesters painted a grim look at the potential consequences of reopening, Governor Kemp had moved on to other matters tweeting that he had traveled to South Georgia to assess storm damage. I don't think people should have to make a choice between going to work and risking their lives. I just want people to know what it might look like if I come around and visit them because of these stupid rules. I reached out to the governor's office today for a response to today's protests and concerns associated with reopening. They did not comment. Live outside the governor's mansion here in Atlanta, Adam Murphy, CBS 46 News. Adam, thank you. New testing sites popping up tonight as Georgia begins to reopen. The majority are drive through another layer of safety to prevent the virus from spreading. CBS 46's Ashley Thompson is live where the most recent site is now up and running. Ashley. That's right, the National Guard has been here all day assisting with testing and take a look. There are some cars coming in just now, some drivers coming in to get tested. This test site closes at six, which is actually much later than other Metro Atlanta sites. But yes, this site opened for the first time today. We're at a parking lot near the old Turner Field, which is now Georgia State University. And the State National Guard is on site here, not only here, but at six other locations in Atlanta. More than 22,000 people in Georgia have tested positive for the novel coronavirus, and with increased testing, we'll likely see that number rise. The White House has rolled out criteria for reopening states, which includes a downward trajectory of documented cases within a 14-day period. But Governor Kemp is moving more quickly. Because of this, medical professionals are stressing the importance of more widespread testing with quick access to results. New testing locations continue to pop up across the state. Today, seven new drive through locations opened in Atlanta. This Johns Creek site at a former Walgreens has also opened. Data from testing helps identify hot spots within the state and better helps professionals understand the spread of the virus. While increased testing capability is applauded, it's no reason to refrain from best practices like social distancing and frequent hand washing. But what is the bad thing is if we have more hospitalizations, if we have more deaths, more, uh, you know, complications from hospital treatments, by people being hospitalized from COVID, well, that's bad. And so, you know, if anything, if we're doing more testing and if you turn positive, you need to go and seek supportive care uh, when it's appropriate. And back out here live, you can see the service members are now closing up shop. They are wrapping up and cleaning up for the day. Georgia still ranks in the top 10 worst states for coronavirus testing. Hopefully with these new testing sites popping up, that will change things.
of course, we will continue to follow this. For now, I'm live in Atlanta, Ashley Thompson, CBS 46 News. Ashley, thank you. And now, despite the concerns, it is back to business today. CBS 46's Carolyn Ryan live in Woodstock at Gloss Hair Salon. And Carolyn, that salon booked solid today. They sure are. Good afternoon, Sean. You know, they are getting back to business here at this salon. They're handing out gloves and masks, and they're even doing temperature checks at the door. It was funny. My boss texted me that they were reopening salons. Credit cards are swiping. And, you know, she's a blonde, too, and, yeah, blondes know the pain. <laughs> Employees are servicing. Oh, my God. <gasps> Feels amazing. And customers are smiling. Oh, God, my grades were looking horrible. Businesses in Georgia getting back to work. And boy, does it feel good. It's worth it. Yeah, I don't know if I'll ever get used to this. So, but it's it's worth it to just to feel normal again. The decision to reopen, though, not an easy one for salon gloss owner Tim Timmons, weighing health concerns and economic ones. All I know is um, my staff needed to work and um, uh, we had a lot of people that just needed to get, get in and get their hair done. And I have a business and staff that need to survive. But he's taken extraordinary measures to make sure everyone is safe. I got two masks on, so I'm feeling good. I got my gloves. They did a really, really good job. Handing out gloves and masks, doing temperature checks, limiting capacity and sanitizing. There's hesitation, but you know, like, just using precautions. I mean, I'm doing more now than I do when I go to Publix, so, um, or even the doctor's office. Governor Kemp said he trusted businesses to take the necessary steps to get back to work safely, and this salon is showing how it's done. It is. The economy is terrible. We've got to get everyone back to work. All right, by the way, if somebody has a temperature of 99 or above, they won't be allowed in. My temperature clocked in at 95.5. But obviously, in addition to all of these safety measures that they're taking here, you've got to have the demand for all of this to work. This salon seems to have that. They are booked for the next two weeks. Live in Woodstock, Carolyn Ryan, CBS 46 News. And we had a lot of rain and some storms yesterday, but things cleared out nicely for today. We are seeing mostly cloudy skies right now over Centennial Olympic Park, but many areas did get some peaks of sunshine that allowed those temperatures to warm to the 70s today. In fact, right now it is in the 70s in Metro Atlanta, some 60s in the North Georgia mountains. And you see those clouds holding on tight across the North Georgia mountains. I'm watching a system to our west right now over Oklahoma, Arkansas. That is going to be our next weather maker, and it is moving east. It is going to stay north of North Georgia, but it is going to move close enough that the North Georgia mountains and the northern metro Atlanta areas and suburbs will see some rain tomorrow. Some of the storms could be fairly strong for tomorrow, a 30% chance of rain. So again, not going to be a big washout, but the problem is anything that does develop could be strong, especially north of I-20 with that highest risk of strong storms in the North Georgia mountains could see large hail and strong damage Winds. I'll pinpoint when the rain will arrive. We'll talk about the rest of your weekend and even another chance of strong storms in that seven day forecast coming up. Well, there's a new normal for businesses that require employees to get up close and personal with its clients. Stringent regulations now in place at hair salons. Masks must be worn, social distancing now required. CBS 46's Haley Mason continues our live team coverage. Hey there, Sean. Of course, it is difficult or impossible to do social distancing when you're doing someone's hair and nails, but this salon has been taking precautions, making everyone wear a mask and trying to at least keep the distance between other clients. This is the Steve Hightower Hair Salon and Day Spa. They offer full service beauty products and services here in Buckhead. And Steve Hightower was mainly doing coloring and trims today. He had a nail technician out doing manicures and pedicures, a cosmetologist doing uh, lashes and esthetician rather. They had masks and towels covering the client's faces and they limited all forms of communication and conversation. They even spaced out each client with at least 10 feet of space in between everyone. Each station equipped with sprays and hand sanitizers and cleaning products 
sanitation periods in the schedule. Everyone again had to wear a mask as soon as they walked into the door and they were having to stand behind these plastic shields at the reception desk. As many safety procedures as that were put in place, people felt like they had mixed emotions about the reopening of these types of businesses so soon. I feel good about our safety protocols. Um, I feel good about that. I don't feel good about the governor having us come back this early, though. The salon, I feel, is, is, is okay as long as it's done properly, like here. The gyms, I'm not so sure about. Like, I, I won't go to the gym right now. And, of course, most salons won't be able to do what Steve was able to do because it was expensive and time-consuming. But he did suggest that if you are a stylist, maybe just take one client at a time, space it out, and continue to spot stuff up those cleaning supplies until you can more fully reopen safely. Reporting live in Buckhead, Haley Mason, CBS 46 News. And we have some changes heading our way and they do happen during the weekend. The good news is the rain we see tomorrow will be isolated. So for most of you, you will be unimpacted by this storm system with partly cloudy skies and breezy conditions. Let me show you what it looks like outside right now on CBS 46 Pinpoint Camera Network. And we're seeing a lot of clouds, but there are some breaks in the clouds and we are getting some sunshine out there. Because of that, we did get up to 72 degrees today. Right now, it's down to 70 degrees. Winds out of the northwest at 10, but we are going to see those winds really start to pick up tomorrow. It will be breezy breezy with partly cloudy skies right now feeling pretty good those areas that got stuck with clouds throughout the entire afternoon have stayed in the 60s but overall upper 60s low 70s and you see those clouds right now on cbs 46 pinpoint satellite and radar some of us seeing some bright sunny skies like athens you're looking pretty good uh harrelson county floyd county you're seeing quite a bit of sunshine right now and we'll continue to see those clouds decrease overnight but tomorrow the clouds move back in as does the rain i'm watching the system to our west that is going to be our next weather maker that will bring rain across North Georgia. Now it is going to stay north of our area. I put that arrow there. You can see it's moving to the northeast. So it will stay out of North Georgia, but it will be close enough that the southern end of that system will clip the North Georgia mountains and therefore we will see some rain associated with it. No rain in the morning, but after about 2 p.m. we will see some rain. But notice how isolated the rain is. Most of you will stay dry tomorrow. So I don't want you to think tomorrow is going to be a washout or tomorrow you need to stay inside all day. That is not the case. In fact, most of you dry, but those of you who do get a couple pop-up showers and storms could see severe weather. So that threat of severe weather isolated, but certainly there, those areas in green, so mainly those areas north of I-20 do have a level one risk of severe weather on a scale of one to five. It is a low end and you see the risks there, mainly hail and winds. Those are going to be the two big threats for tomorrow. So tomorrow breezy, those storms mainly in the mountains north of I-20, the further north you are, the higher the chance of rain. But I think a lot of you will stay dry for tomorrow. And it will be warm, even with the winds, we are getting up to 79 degrees. After tomorrow, we get a nice long break. But on Wednesday, that is our next weather maker. We have this system that's going to skirt on in, and this will bring us a decent chance of rain. As, now, as of now, a 50% chance of showers, but I expect that to go up. That rain will be on Wednesday. Could see some strong storms with that system. So out of the next seven days, two days I'm watching tomorrow will be the more isolated of the two, mainly in the North Georgia mountains. It will be more scattered on Wednesday, but at least this time around, we have several days to recover before that next chance of rain moves on in.